Okay, so we've learned how to define and invoke functions, parameters, arguments, return values, all that good stuff. Um, I want to do a couple of examples here. I'm going to work on this pig dice game and see if we can use functions to, uh, to keep this program organized and efficient, um, which is one of the main advantages of functions, the idea of modularity, right, organization, breaking things up into modules, and reusability, that we can reuse the code. Okay, so I'll give you some start code in the program or in the video description. Pice, pig dice game start. I'm going to open that up with code. And all this start code has is some HTML um, and some styles. And the main.js is empty. That's what we'll be working on. Um, let's just open this up first. The main idea with the pig dice game is it's a two player game. Um, player one's going to start here. Oh, I initialized the points to 100. That's not right. Sorry, I got to refresh that. Boom. Index.html right here. You should start at zero total points. There we go. Um, so you start off with zero points, and then on your turn, you roll. And every roll, you add to your turn points. And as soon as you hold, your turn points will be added to your total points. Now, why would you hold? Why wouldn't you just keep on rolling? Because if you roll a one, you lose all of your turn points, you forfeit them, and then it's the other player's turn. So you kind of got it. It's a bit of a risk there, right? You keep rolling. Oh, but if you get a one, you lose everything. Not all your total points, but your turn points. Okay. Um, and it just switches turns, and the first one to 100 points wins. All right. So a couple of things to point out here. We're going to need to update the total points. We're going to need to update the turn points. We're going to need to update these drawings, these images, to indicate the role that was there. And we'll have to listen to these buttons. So if you look at the HTML, um, there's a player 1 area and a player 2 area, which are identical except for P1 and P2 for the IDs. Um, we're going to have this header has an ID so we can change whose turn it is by just changing who, which uh, the background. I think I have an active class for that. Uh, where is it? Active right here, background color green, color white. And you can see that in your index.html that I start with player one having the class active. So we'll remove and add that class when we switch turns. Then we've got a span with the ID P1 points, which we'll update, a span with the P1 turn points, which we'll update, this image needs an ID as well, because we need to update the source of that image. So ID equals um, P1 roll image. Why not? And we'll add ID equals P2 roll image, like so. And the buttons have IDs so that we can add event listeners to the buttons. Same here, same here. And notice this disabled property. Um, on the player two buttons, they are not active right now, whereas these ones are active. And uh, we'll just have to turn those on and off as we switch turns. All right. So make sure you're acquainted with the HTML. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's see if we can start doing some JavaScript. All right. So a title here, we'll just go pick dice game. And let's start with some event listeners right everything's set up for player one to start their turn so we'll go document dot get element by id and we wanted the button p1 roll okay p1 roll like that and we'll add an event listener that when i click that button i'm gonna do p1 turn awesome Let's have our event functions, function p1 turn, and this will do the code for p1's turn. And let's start by, actually, you know what? I'm going to need to start by, hold on. I'm saying p1 turn, that doesn't make sense. Go p1 roll, because that's what they just did. They clicked on the roll, so player one is going to roll. So what do I want to do? I want to roll and update the dice image. All right. Now to roll, I'm going to do random number between 1 and 6. And this is a great opportunity to go to my libraries. And I have my little math extensions. I'm going to copy and go to pick dice game. And I'm going to paste that into here. 
And if we look at this file, remember we had that random decimal, random int, round two. I want this random int function. So let's load that math extension library, script source equals math extensions. Wonderful. And now in here, I can get a local variable. Let uh, roll number be assigned um, math.random int. That is what we call the right math.random int. Beautiful. Math.random int 1 to 7 because uh, it's inclusive and this is exclusive. So it'll go up to the integer 7, which means it'll stop at 6. Okay, great. And then I should uh, indicate that that changed by going document .get element by ID um, p1 roll image, right? That was the image ID right there. And what do I want to do with this image element? I want to change its source to become uh, boop, 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 boop. what are all my images? Dice one, dice two, dice three, dice four, dice five, dice six, which is beautiful because then I can just use the roll number and I can go dice plus roll num plus dot png. Right, so whatever the roll is, it'll, because um, these are named so nicely, I can just do whatever the roll number is and insert it into the, the file name right here. This, I think, is a good place to just check to see if things are working. So if I hit roll, ooh, nothing worked. Random de random des is not defined. Oh, is my math library broken? Awesome. Oh, I must have used the copy an old version into there. Or when I switched it to, I didn't test it properly when I switched it to the math object. I need to call math.randomdecimal in order for in my random int function. Yeah. I think I just renamed things and then it messed up. Roll. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now I know what's happening. It's too early in the morning. I'm making mistakes. Um, I should stop. No, just kidding. Okay, main.js. Uh, of course, these images are, if we go here, the images are in the images folder, images slash dice three. So when I build my path, I need to go images slash dice number. Okay, at least it was trying to do something. Hey, there we go. Okay, and it looks like my images, when I copied and pasted them, they weren't all the same size. They did move a little bit, but that's okay. All right, rolls are working, great. Okay, next up. Comment, what do I want to do next? Roll and update dice image. Um, I need to check, roll, and take action, right? Depending if it's uh, based on one or not, right? If it's a one, I gotta switch turns and delete the turn points and all that stuff. If it's not a one, then we do something different. So let's check if roll num does not equal one. Right, so if it doesn't equal one, it's just a regular old, I get some points. So I should probably have some variables to keep track of um, some data. So let's do some, do any global, yeah, let's do some global variables. And I'm gonna go let player one, and I'm gonna let player one be an object that has multiple properties. Because I want to have a total points property that's initialized to zero. I want to have a turn points property that's initialized to zero. And I think that's it for now. We might need more, but I for sure need the two different point values. Okay, if roll num does not equal one, then what do I do? I would go player, let's update points. So player one dot turn points plus equals roll num, right? Whatever they roll on the dice, it gets added to their points. Uh, we need to also display this. So the P1 turn points. So document I get element by ID, P1 turn points, 
dot inner HTML is assigned player one dot turn points. And let's see if that works. So I hit roll, I rolled a two and I got two points. I rolled a three and it looks like it's adding it to my point values. Let's see if I get a one again. And then the one didn't add any points. Okay, awesome. All right, so let's do the else now. And we'll uh, lose, this is if we roll the one, right? So lose turn points and switch turns, I guess is kind of the idea. Okay. Do, do, do. Um, player one dot turn points is assigned zero, right? They lose their points because they rolled a one. And then I should display that. So let's copy and paste this and display that. Um, okay, and then for, excuse me, for switching turns, actually let's do the comments different here. We'll lose turn points and then we'll switch turns. Bump, bump, ba -da 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 -dump. Is there anything I need to do for switching turns? I just need to change the active stuff, I think, here. So let's start and disable and enable the buttons. Okay. So to do that, I would go document.get element, hello, element by ID. Um, I think it was P1 header. P1 header has the class active. Okay. P1 header dot class list is a property that gives me all the a list of all the classes and then I can do a dot remove active and then I'm going to copy and paste that and go p2 header dot class list dot add I think that's right active let's just see if that works okay so everything's initialized I roll Four points, two points, three points, three more points. Come on, where's the one? Awesome. Turn points was zero, total points is still zero. And then I move on to player two total points is now active and it's their turn. I just have to do the buttons. So for the buttons, document get element by ID. I think they just called them P1 roll, P1 hold, P2 roll, good. Uh, whoops, switch to this file. So P1 roll dot. Um, so the disable is actually a property itself. So just so we go dot source, dot href, that kind of stuff, we can go dot disabled and it's a Boolean. So we can assign it to um, true. We want it to be disabled. And I'm just going to copy and paste because I have to also switch a P2 hold. Sorry, P1 hold needs to be disabled. And then P2 roll and P2 hold need to, the disable needs to be false, which means that they will be enabled. Okay, let's see if that works. So roll away. Okay, cool. Oh, okay, that worked, but this didn't become active because what did I do? Oh, why am I doing the string true? Sorry, I need to actually do the Boolean values, true and false. There we go. Roll, and now these are disabled, awesome. And these are enabled, but I don't have player two working yet. Okay. Anyway, that's a good point to stop. I'm running out of time here anyway. 20 seconds left. Um, I'll just continue this in the next video. And we'll look at checking for uh, the hold button as well and getting the total points and checking for winning and stuff like that. And then getting player two working as well. Okay. Hope that made sense so far. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.